Hey everybody, this is Tyler Baker, the pastor of Valiant Baptist Church, and we are located in Jacksonville, Florida. This is going to be part four of the series entitled, Jesus is Jehovah, wherein I'm proving from the Bible, the Old and New Testament scriptures, that Jesus Christ, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was in fact the one and only true God, Jehovah, manifest in the flesh. Now, before I begin this particular episode, I'd like to review what we learned in our first three episodes quickly. Number one, we saw that Jesus Christ said in John 8, 24, in order to have our sins forgiven, that we must believe that, quote, I am he. Well, this is Jesus Christ identifying himself as Jehovah. This is a very distinct and actually an exclusive title and phrase that Jehovah of the Old Testament uses repeatedly to separate himself from the other gods and to identify himself to the nation of Israel. Not only that, in part two, we learn that Jehovah in the Old Testament is given the title and calls himself the true God. He's the one and only true God. Well, that phrase is only used one other time in the Bible, and it ends up being in the New Testament while Jesus Christ is referred to as the true God. In part three, we saw that Jehovah in the Old Testament, he would refer to himself as the I Am. He is emphasizing his eternality, that is, he, he is eternal. And also, not only that, he's emphasizing that he is self-existent. Well, we see Jesus Christ multiple times in the New Testament, and particularly one time in the New Testament, referring to himself as the I Am, in so doing, expressing that he himself is eternal and saying that he was even before the man Abraham, saying that he, of course, is Jehovah of the Old Testament. Now, now I want to prove that Jesus is Jehovah from a little bit of a different angle in episode number four. And that is, I'm going to be using a prophecy that is predicted to directly or personally be fulfilled on Jehovah. And I'm going to show you that this prophecy is actually fulfilled through Jesus Christ himself. I want you to look with me in Isaiah chapter number 45, and we're going to begin in verse number 21. It reads, Tell ye and bring them near, yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I, the Lord? And there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Verse 22, Look unto me, and be ye saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. Verse 23, I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. So there in verse number 21, we can see that he identifies himself. This is Jehovah speaking. Not only that, he goes on to say that he is the only God, the ju a, a just God and a Savior. Tells Israel in verse 22, look unto me and be ye saved. But verse number 23 is what I want to focus on. And this is where we find a prophecy found. He begins in verse number 23 by being very emphatic, by being very clear that this is him, himself. He's speaking in singularity. And he says, I have sworn by myself... And he says, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. And then he goes on to tell you the prophecy. That unto me, Jehovah, who's speaking, that unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. So it's a very clear and a very specific prophecy that Jehovah tells us will be fulfilled to him. Every knee and every tongue will bow to him and swear to him. That's found in Romans chapter number 14. Romans chapter number 14, verse number 10 reads, But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, verse number 11, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Verse 12, so that every one of us shall give account of himself to God. So Romans 14, verse number 10, first tells us that all of us are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Then we get to verse number 11, and it actually quotes Isaiah 45. And it teaches and tells you that Isaiah 45, when Jehovah himself prophesied that unto him every knee would bow and every tongue would confess, that that is fulfilled when we all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. It says that we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, for it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, that's Jehovah, 
Every knee shall bow to me. Every tongue shall confess to God. Who are we bowing before? Christ. Who does it say we're going to bow before? Jehovah. Who does it say right here we're going to confess to? God. Who are we confessing to? Christ, of course, we're standing in his judgment seat. Not only that, it tells us in verse number 12 further to prove that. So that everyone shall give account. Every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Who is our judge? We're standing before the judgment seat of Christ. There's no wiggle room for this. It is not possible to get out of this. Jehovah himself personally prophesied very clearly and emphatically that every knee would bow to him and every tongue would confess and swear to him. We see this taking place with the man Christ Jesus, who is Jehovah God, who came down and was born on this earth as a man. He rose again and he's in heaven now today. And, and every single tongue will one day stand before the man Christ Jesus, who is Jehovah in the flesh, and fulfill that prophecy when Jehovah said, unto me every knee would bow and every tongue would swear. We can see that being fulfilled very clearly through the man Christ Jesus. God bless you and have a great day.